Currently on a three-game losing streak and faced with what people are calling the toughest schedule in NBA history over the next 10 games, the Golden State Warriors are in trouble. Having lost top wing defender DeAnthony Melton for the season to ACL surgery, the Warriors' depth on the wing has taken a major hit. With the loss of Melton, Golden State lost their starting shooting guard, and they've gone just an NBA 17th best 3-4 since he went down. The main rotation move from Steve Kerr in response to DeAnthony going down has been to start Lindy Waters in replace of him, which has included playing Lindy in crunch time. Against the Thunder, in what was a four-point loss to OKC, Kerr made the mistakes of subbing out Buddy Heald and Kyle Anderson with just under six minutes left. Heald made a three off an Anderson assist to put the dubs up one with 8.14 left in the game, then Kyle Anderson made a driving layup with 5.45 to put the Warriors up 3. Promptly, at the exact same time as that layup, Heald was then replaced for Lindy Waters, and a minute later, Anderson was replaced for Jonathan Kaminga. I get Buddy Heald and Kyle can't play the full quarter, but they were in a rhythm that shouldn't have been messed with. The Thunder then went on an 8-0 run after that that the Warriors could ultimately never recover from. A missed layup from Wiggins didn't help, but the lineup that Kerr put out there dug the dubs a deep hole in the dying seconds that didn't have to be dug. Against the Spurs two games prior, the Warriors seemed to run out of gas on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, so that's what I'll chalk that loss where they blew a 17-point lead and scored a season-low 13 points in the fourth quarter up to. However, against the Nets, we had more questionable substitutions being made from Stephen Douglas Kerr. Curry headed to the bench with 4.33 remaining in the third quarter, and the Warriors leading by 9, but when Steph checked back in at the 7.29 mark of the final quarter, Brooklyn had taken the lead on a 25-11 run. Do you think about 30 minutes per game for Steph is about where you want him for the season? Yeah, I mean, we, we usually um, pencil him in for, for 32, and um, we'd like to keep it around that number. We were able to give him a good rest in the first half because the second unit was playing really well. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't love to, to run him the whole fourth quarter. And I like to have him, um, you know, close with, uh, with some energy. And, and so that means, um, you know, if we can give him that last eight minutes, generally I feel pretty good about that. But um, at that point, um, you know, Brooklyn was rolling um, and uh, we, we couldn't slow them down. Now, I get wanting to close the game with energy, but that isn't going to mean much if you've allowed the other team to gain a ton of flow and confidence. Again, the injury to Melton was a massive blow, they didn't have Curry against the Thunder, and I thought they put up a valiant effort for the most part, but the Warriors have so much depth that everything comes down to how Kerr mixes and matches. He didn't do a good job of that against OKC, and it came back to bite them in what turned out to be a winnable game, as the Thunder had lost Jalen Williams midway through the game, and the Warriors had been hustling to defend Shea Gilgis Alexander fairly well, despite SGA having a big scoring night. Steve's motivating tactics were great in the Thunder matchup, so he got an A plus in that regard, but when he's failing in the substitution department, that motivation from him really doesn't mean that much. Kerr has to keep guys on the floor when they have a rhythm, and rest his players more strategically, or the Warriors could very well fall back out of the playoff picture after these next 10 games. In them, the Dubs take on the Phoenix Suns, who are 9-2 with Kevin Durant, followed by the Denver Nuggets, who have the league's best player in Nikola Jokic, then the Houston Rockets, who own the Western Conference's second-best record right now. Next, it'll be Golden State facing a team that made the West Finals last year in the Minnesota Timberwolves in consecutive games, followed by the having won four in a row Memphis Grizzlies, and then the T-Wolves again, both on the road. It's then on to face another team that made last year's Final Four in the Indiana Pacers, before taking on the fifth-seeded rivaled LA Lakers, followed by a team you've lost to twice already in the LA Clippers. To close out the 10-game stretch, it's again a matchup with the Suns, then a matchup with the 17-3 Cleveland Cavaliers, who you've already lost to this season like you have to the Clippers, and if Buddy Heald doesn't pick it up and get back to the way he started the season, things are likely to get very ugly. The streaky heeled looked like he couldn't miss to begin the season, as over a stretch where the Warriors went 7-1, Buddy shot 52% from the field and 51% from distance. Over the next 10 games where the dubs have gone 5-5, five five, Buddy shot just 40% from the field 
and 37% from distance. In addition to Kerr's substitutions and Buddy's shooting, the Warriors also have to convert easy opportunities better if they want to survive this stretch. Golden State ranks dead last in the league in combined layup and free throw shooting so far in 2024-25. Let me know what the dubs have to pick up the most if they want to survive this stretch. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.